how can you be assured that you're actually using the correct one for your application? So this presentation, we're going to look at some of the different nozzles available. These include chrome-plated nozzles, shower nozzles, double nozzles. Talk about the pros and cons and the benefits uh, of each one of these. So let's take a look. Or not. Let's take a look at a standard Trump laser head. So if you were to ask an operator, which nozzle should you be using for this application, they would probably come back to you and say, well, either 1.2 or 1.4, or give you some sort of diameter or orifice size. Well, this is because they don't uh, generally realize that there's a lot of other styles and geometries of nozzles out there. So as an example, this trough head, there's actually seven different distinct basic configurations. Let's take a look at these. So again, it's not about the necessarily the orifice size, but it's also about the different uh, configure, uh, configurations and geometry of these nozzles. So you can see an example here. So let's take a look at a couple of other different nozzles. So here we have two nozzles that the outside geometry is actually identical uh, on each. If you were to see these from an external view, you'd think they were exactly the same. But internally, they're quite different. You can see the one on the left here is considered to be a cylindrical nozzle. This is a low pressure cutting application. You're going to see this on your mild steel cutting with oxygen um, and, and again the low pressure applications. Versus the conical nozzle on the right here, this is your, your high pressure cutting. So this is nitrogen cutting, stainless steel, aluminum. You'll also see this uh, argon cutting um, with titanium. So again, they look the same on the outside, very different on the inside, very different applications. Plated nozzles. You know, this is the the easiest way to to get a really nice bang for your buck. Chrome plated nozzles are simply that: just chrome uh, or uh, standard copper nozzles with chrome plating. But what does the chrome plating actually do for us? It's adding uh, quite a bit of durability to the outside of the nozzle. Why does this help? How does this save money? Well, if you were to hit a tip up uh, after cutting, you're probably going to damage just a, a standard copper nozzle. However, with the uh, chrome plating nozzle, it's much more durable and is able to withstand these uh, tip-up crashes. Additionally, if you have a bunch of spatter built up on these, you're able to uh, clean these quite a bit easier with Scotch-Brite and this type of thing, which if you did uh, this with a, with a standard copper nozzle, would actually start to erode the orifice and affect your cutting. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. So again, it's, it's, it's a, you know, for, for a 15% premium on a nozzle, you're gonna see double or more of the life and uh, again, also reduce downtime. So good product, easy to use. Next would be a shower nozzle. You know, a shower nozzle is just like it, uh, just like the name implies. Looks just like a shower head. The uh, principle behind the shower nozzle is, is in oxygen cutting, low pressure, you're using these actual uh, shower jets to force oxygen into the kerf of the cut. By forcing the oxygen into the kerf of the cut, it allows you to cut thicker material. So if you were to say have a, a low power or a lower power CO2, two kilowatts or, or something around that range, it's gonna allow you to cut thicker material than, than the specifications allow. Additionally, um, it, it increases the exothermic reaction between the oxygen and the cut, um, which is going to uh, increase the speed of your cut also. Now, you have all of these great benefits, but like anything else, there are some drawbacks as well. The one drawback to the shower nozzle is if these orifice uh, holes become plugged, your cut quality becomes deteriorated very, very fast, and uh, you're going um, to start to have cut problems. Also, the, uh, the wall on the shower nozzle is much thinner than a standard nozzle, so your life is going to be decreased on this. So you're trading, again, speed, capability, good edge quality, but you're going to have reduced life. So next would be a, a double nozzle, which is simply a, a nozzle um, pressed within another nozzle. The benefit here, um, it, it really comes down to edge quality. The edge quality on a double nozzle is fantastic on, on the cut surface. Um, there are a few other advantages to this. This is creating, we found that by, by inserting one nozzle into another, it created a, a null zone of, of laminar airflow, which is incredibly smooth. This is how we arrive at the, the increased um, cut quality and, and edge quality of the part. The additional benefit to this, and it's something that uh, was kind of found out after the fact, 
was that this this null zone at the at the exit of the orifice of the of the nozzle also helps to prevent back spatter from coming back onto the lens, thus increasing the lens life as well. So it was an added benefit. wasn't planned, but it's worked out well. Next will be our, our fine featured nozzles, and, and when we refer to fine features, generally we're talking to a nozzle that comes to a point. This point allows you to get into smaller areas and, and create uh, you know, smaller, more detailed work. These are fantastic, again, for, for getting, into, uh, getting into tight places, especially if you're using a five-axis type machine. The one disadvantage to, to these fine feature nozzles, though, many of the height regulation systems, uh, the signal is actually carried to the point of the nozzle. As you reduce that point of the nozzle, you're reducing the surface area of the nozzle. This reduced surface area will actually start to cause uh, uh, some height regulation problems in some instances. So th there is the trade-off to, to being able to produce parts that you normally wouldn't with a standard nozzle, but again, you may have some problems with the height regulation.